Estamos con el señor Garen James de el show Gigolos de Showtime. And uh, I want to be this man. <laughs> Garen, welcome. Thank you for being here yes, with us. Yes, thank you. Uh, you have hola. A very, uh, hola, hola. Hola. Un poquito español siempre, ¿verdad? Un, un poquito. Mi esposa es colombiana. Ah, ya. Yeah. So sí. you know the... I can listen. I know when I'm uh, in trouble. Does she get mad in Colombian? Yes. <laughs> so I know when I'm in trouble when I hear a bunch of Spanish words. ¿Qué le pasa a usted siempre uh, con su cosa? <laughs> some of that. Yeah, some of that. <laughs> uh, you have a beautiful family. I, 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 oh. I was reading a, an interview you did. Okay. About uh, how interesting your life uh, is now. And how different from before? You were a model. Yes. Uh, were you in California uh, uh, at the time, or what were you? Yeah, I've been in, well, I traveled as a model all over Europe and um, Miami, Los Angeles, yeah. But mostly, oh, oh you were based in Florida, in yes. uh, Miami, actually, Miami, right? Yeah, yeah, Miami, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, how did you fall into drugs and stuff at the uh, time? Yeah, I mean, I got, I was really, really bad. Um, You know, the fashion world is pretty high paced mm -hmm. and there's a lot of events to go to and networking and things like that. And and basically I fell into a hole. But I believe that addiction, you know, there's a lot of people that will try certain things or yeah. do certain things or have some alcohol. But, you know, I believe that addiction, you know, you're I believe that you're born with it and, and you can take certain substances that kind of set it off. Yeah. And uh, basically just come, you know, into a, a vicious cycle of of um, addiction. We all have to be on something. <laughs> it, right. it could be adrenaline, but right. it could also be alcohol, uh, cocaine, uh, yeah. you know, sex, right. whatever, right? We yeah. all have to be on something. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, there's some people that, right, they have, uh, you know, they have sex and then that becomes their addiction. So... Um, you know, I believe that addiction has a lot to do with it. It's more of like, uh, you know, a mental health issue. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't believe that, uh, you know, addicts choose to become addicts. Um, I don't think it's like you don't, you, wake friend, up, you don't even think you have a problem uh, right. most of the time. Right. You know? So, you know, that's the crazy thing about addiction is that people look at it like, oh, you know, he's, he's just, uh, a, a weak minded person or a mm -hmm. weak individual or can't control himself. And, you know, it is a mental, a mental disorder uh, addiction. So. Especially with cocaine and uh, crack, uh, that's a little bit stronger. Right. You, you were on both uh, yes. at the time? Yeah. Uh, what do they do in rehab that they help you, you know, come out of it? <sighs> you know, rehab is just like, uh, it's like trying to teach you it's like basic life skills again. Um, you, you know, when you're an addict, you had morals before. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, is, you will have to cross a line at some point and it starts off with just like lying to somebody okay like uh are you uh, are you on something no i'm not mm -hmm. you know so and you know it's not good to lie to people and then and then the, the next thing that could happen is you know you you need a little bit of extra money and yeah. so you know you are at a store and instead of using your last ten dollars to you know um Yeah, by uh, food or gas. By food, oh, yeah. you maybe steal something and then you have money for drugs. Yeah. So, you know, it's like you cross these lines that you know you're not supposed to cross. And as you cross them, your brain has to then readjust. To yeah, because that, that, you perceive them as little victories, actually. Yes. You know? yeah. So your brain <laughs> has to adjust. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So your brain adjusts your morals and mm. says, okay, well, no, no, no. You know, that's okay to lie occasionally. You know, that's okay to steal something occasionally. It's okay, you know, to, to hurt somebody. It's okay to, to take advantage advantage of somebody mm -hmm. it's okay you know they're going to be okay and and then you know you cross all of these lines to where it comes to a point where it's like you know well it's okay to smoke crack or you know it's okay to put a needle in my arm yeah, or sure, you know yeah. all of these things that <laughs> were like a never before of course yeah you we know? don't want to feel like the, like a bad person you know correct so, yeah so you sort of change your whole morals and then you know you go to rehab and they're like <laughs> they try to teach you like Uh, you know, that's not, it's not a good thing, you know, and, you know, change people, places and things, you know, and a lot of, a lot of, uh, addiction is based around, on old behaviors. Mm -hmm. And so it's about changing your behaviors and doing more healthy, beautiful, like spiritual things. Um, you know, and 12 step programs are all about learning spirituality again. You know, it learning. seems to me, yeah. uh, by, uh, you know, the way you're describing it, that rehab was not the, the thing that made you change but 
No, not really. What was it? You know, uh, rehab is a great place to go um, to get some time away from a drug. Mm -hmm. However, the crazy thing about rehab is there's no magic pill Mm. or magic wand that they can wave over you while you're in rehab. It's like, you know, and I don't want everybody out there, somebody that's sitting there and like, oh, my parents are trying to make me to go to rehab and here's Gary and he's saying rehab's no good. Rehab is amazing. It's a great place to go yeah. uh, to, to get some time away from the substances. Because you to will not do it on your own. Yeah, Correct. Yeah. You can't, you. It's impossible to do it on your own. So it's a great place to go as a shelter. Mm. You know, as a shelter away, it's a safe environment with, with like-minded people. But there's no magic wand that anyone's going to wave over you and be like – Think you're cured, you know. Yeah, you can exactly. now be a social crackhead. Yeah. Um, I've heard a lot of rehabs are based yeah. on religion, and I'm not yeah. a religious guy. So right. if I had to go to rehab for whatever, right. how would they even, you know, try well, to guide so many, me? Yeah, I mean, there's so many different types and formats of of, of rehabs. I mean, there's boot camp. <laughs> yes, there's a boot camp one. There's a religious one. But but you know what really needs to happen when you leave there um, is to find like a 12 step program. Yeah. Um, because, you know, addiction is like a daily reprieve. So 30 days in treatment, you walk out of treatment and it's like you're out fresh again. And, you know, with addiction, it's so crazy because it's, it's the only disease that tells you that you don't have a disease. It's the only disease that, that tells you, you know, it, uh, it just like sits there and just sits there and lies to you. Yeah. It's like, it's just like a lie after lie after lie after lie. And you have to run these thoughts by other people, like minded people mm-hmm. on a daily basis. You know, do you think it's a good idea to do this? And you know, somebody in recovery will look at you yeah. like, I, I don't do smoke think, weed. I don't think that's a, such a great idea. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So your brain tells you all these things like, Oh, weed is legal now. It's, I should smoke a joint. And then, you know, but then that joint could lead to this, to lead yeah. to that, to lead to this, to lead to that. And then, you know, you're back homeless again what was the so when you uh come out of rehab and uh, what did you do what did uh, how did you decide to change your life well you know what i i did not want to change my life and and that's the crazy thing is i didn't this wasn't like something that i wanted to do i mean i was a bad drug addict then i got arrested yeah, I, I saw yeah. I saw one story in which uh, you were living with with a girl. Yes, and then she told you if you get high one more time, you're out. So right. and you did, and I did, and, and then you broke into the house. Yes, yeah, I, you know I broke into the house, and I basically because she changed the lock and I wanted to get my my things. And um, uh, while I was in there, it was you know I just really wanted to get high, and it was you know like I said, your morals change and yeah. your beliefs change, and and I was like you know what, let me. And I just looked at the table and there was a laptop. And I said, let me just take that to the pawn shop. Mm, I'll let her yeah. know. She'll just get it out. You know, yeah. I'll pay her back at <laughs> she some un- point. She knows me. She'll understand. She and, yeah. And so. But she didn't understand. <laughs> no. You know, thank God she had the courage, you know, to call the police on, yeah. on me that day. And, you know, I. I that I, takes courage to do. From, it takes courage uh, yeah. from, for, for somebody to do that. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of courage. And, uh, you know, I'm still friends with her today and, and, you know, every once in a while we'll thank her and, you know, I've paid her That's back cool. threefold. And, but, did but, you feel like that at that moment? <laughs> <laughs> no, right? <laughs> no. But, you know, I, I woke up in jail. <laughs> yeah. You know, I woke up because I was on a, uh, on a binge and then I went on an alcohol binge and then I was in a blackout and then the cops, they, you know, everybody found out where I was and, um, I woke up in jail and, and I just, at that point, I was like at the bottom of the barrel, like mm-hmm. nobody to call. And I just said to myself, I'll always be a hopeless, helpless drug addict. And then things started changing and, and I was put into different programs and people started to come in and speak to me and share with me and, um, you know, let me know that there was a new way of life and after all these programs. And then, you know, I got based into a, like a 12 step program. So it was a long process, right? Six, I mean, yeah, I was in jail for 10 months and then I was in this, wow. this place called, uh, um, this department of corrections run treatment center for, for six months. Kind of a so 16 months. House or something, or? No, it was like a pretty hardcore, um, oh, okay. uh, uh, jail run treatment center, which is, you know, your sentence, when you sentence to like treatment centers like this, um, you have a sentence like they sentenced me to four years in prison for mm-hmm. my crimes. And they wow. said, but if you complete this program and then a halfway house and then, you know, probation, you're okay. So, you know, you're sitting in this treatment center with 90 other men mm-hmm. that are all there court ordered. 
and there's a lot of tension and there could be fights that break out. But if you break one rule, they call, they just call 911 and a police car shows up and brings you back to the jail and you go serve your four years in that prison. And that's done with it's, that opportunity. That. Yeah. Whew. Wow. So the pressure is, is really. You yeah. Know, Holding back, kind of, you know, because <laughs> you, you don't want to. Bite your tongue. Yeah. yeah exactly. I mean, it's, you know, to break a rule, you can't, you know, the phones are set up a certain time. You can't sneak out and, and use the phone and cook the calls. You know, it's like you have to. And as an addict, you get a lot of entitlement issues and yep. you get a lot of, um, you get a lot of issues as an addict, you know, uh, um, and uh, I mean, it's, it, I, I bet it's, it's a mix of feelings because they treat you as being sick. But yes. at the same time, you are paying as a criminal. Yes, exactly. So I guess that collides in your mind. I yeah. Think. Well, you know, it, it's in, you know, as an addict, you always are, you know, you start to learn like to get away with things. Mm. You know, you get away with the lie, you get away with the stealing, you get away with all of these little things. And yeah. so when you're in this situation where you're supposed to be good, it's like, I could get away with that. Yeah. I'm slick, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm slick, okay. hip and cool. Yeah, you yeah. know, I could, I can break that rule easy and no one would know. And Especially so, with bad influence around you. Yeah. Right? So, you know, the, the, the thing with, with addiction is learning to follow rules again. Like, because as an addict, you don't really follow any rules. And so that's a great, thing that you learn and and you know that like the treatment center kind of thing is you know they set up rules and you have to follow the rules and you know i remember i was in this one treatment center and there was a rule like you can't feed the ducks okay okay because you know we'd bring our crackers out and feed the ducks yeah and they said well the reason why you can't feed the ducks is because it's a city ordinance that that's illegal to feed the ducks oh wow okay so it's not our rule so you know i brought the crackers out and fed the ducks and and you know and and then i got in trouble and i had to wow. read a speech in front of the class like <laughs> saying that i you know that i was like this is so dumb like a child and, and, like yeah <laughs> and the, the counselor said you realize that you're in relapse mode don't you and i oh, said wow i said well, why how am i in relapse mode and because i fed ducks i think it's a dumb rule and they're yeah. like there you go Wow. Yeah, it's the rules. It's the still, rules that but you, you decided to not you, follow the rules. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, So if you had drugs at the moment in front of you, that would have been maybe, a moment in which yeah. Yeah, I mean not would. not really like, you yeah, know, it's like a process. Like that, that type it's, of situation. It, yeah. Addiction is like a process of of, you know, of relapse. Relapse is not something you don't just wake up and like if you're a recover in recovery, you don't just wake up and there's a crack pipe in your mouth. Mm. It's a process yeah. of breaking a rule and breaking a rule and then, you know, not necessarily liking yourself that day. And, you know, I believe that you're either moving towards loving yourself or, or not liking yourself. And if you don't like yourself, then you might get high. Did that have anything to do with your profession at the time? Like uh, being a model in which, you know, don't, don't you, isn't it really about well, it was stressful image? Or? Yeah, it's an image and stressful and, and things like that. But, you know, addiction is like, uh, There's no boundaries, you know, from Park Bench to Park Avenue. Um, you know, I really, like I said earlier, I think addiction is is centered in uh, in the individual. I don't really believe so much that, you know, because there's addicts on every single sort of socioeconomic of and, you know, men, women, you know, uh, at race. So, do you do you believe sex addiction is a real thing? Or I do believe that, you know, there's um um. There's a, you know, when, when you think of a, uh, the word addiction, you know, usually it's something that you do to a point where there's negative consequences. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you can do anything to any point to where there's a negative consequence. So, you know, as far eating, you know, uh, eating becomes a, a problem and an addiction problem once you're crossing a border to where, you, you know, you're, you're putting yourself into unhealthy situations and risky health situations and things like that to where, you know, you can't even get out of bed. I mean, there's people that are like that. Correct. Um, so, you know, we have to treat that as a, as an addiction and same thing with sex. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people that are, um, you know, ruining their marriages and things like this. Yeah. I guess when, when the sex interrupts, I Correct mean, you your life. Stop being with your family because you know you want to get something else. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, I think so. Now, after all this, yes. What was the first proud moment that you had in your life after all this that, that you said yeah. I'm on I'm on the right track yeah. here? I'm um, hmm. Because you know, I guess you need now. You need your victories. Yes. Now, after you know you come out of rehab, now you need yeah. to uh, really tell yourself that you have you're on the right track that you're gonna become. 
you know, um, I, I just, I got involved in 12 step program and there's a lot of stuff that, that goes along with that. Um, um, there's a multiple 12 step programs out there. Um, I choose not to name the one that I'm in okay. because it's, uh, sure. uh, it's in our traditions not to do that. But, <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of moments along the way. Um, you know, recently, uh, I, I've been applying to go back into the, to the jail systems. Okay. For 10 years. I mean, I to, do to talk yeah. to the inmates. Yeah, so. inmates. So, I mean, I do a lot of meetings where I go into treatment centers and I go into. Uh, I was going to say because yeah. all you have to do is throw a rock at a police yes. car and, and you'll, you're back <laughs> in the system. <laughs> yeah. But that's not what right. you mean. <laughs> no, yeah. So, I mean, I bring a lot of uh, message of recovery into treatment centers, okay, into halfway houses, into things like that. But my passion has always wanted to be uh, bring a meeting into jail okay. because I have. Seven felony convictions, and I've wow. completely changed my life. So, um, so you go, is this the thing you go every other Sunday or yes, something like that? Yes, yes. So, okay. I mean, I applied for 10 years, but I got denied because, wow. because I had too many felonies. Yeah. And this last time that I applied, I sent a video of, uh, you know, a mugshot and then me, and then, you know, pictures of me and my family, and, you know, pictures with me and, and events and, wow, you yeah. know, fundraisers and things like that. So, I got approved. And uh, and then I went to pick up the meeting, and I just picked a certain random night that worked for my schedule. And then I walked down the hallway, and I ended up in the same exact jail cell that I was in twelve or thirteen wow. years. Yeah. Wow! 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 So that was like I I mean I I was walking down the hall, and I was going wow I'm going down the same hallway, you know, ready to make a turn or go upstairs, and the guy stopped at the door, my door. And I went in and I was like, I was in tears when I went in. And, you know, it's funny, like when you go into jail, you're supposed to be like hard, tough. Yeah, 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 tough and hard. And so, yeah. you know, I'm sitting in the chair and I was like, I was like wiping my eyes <laughs> and I, you know, I stood up and I said, listen, I'm sorry, you know, I'm uh, about my persona right now. You know, I'm, 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 uh, I'm normally a little bit tougher, but this was the same cell that I yeah. was in 13 years ago. Wow. And I went and I came in here. I've been fighting. I've been fighting to get in to talk to you guys wow. to let That's you know that, you know, recovery is possible. What do you tell these guys? How, how do you approach that? Oh, I just, I just, I just, you know, I use comedy and I use, because it's hard to keep these guys interest. Um, yeah. Especially because I'm sure there's a lot of people that try to talk to these guys. Uh, how, how do you right. catch their attention? You know? <sighs> I'm flamboyant, you know, and I'm flashy mm -hmm. and I talk to them about, uh, I talk to them about, um, things that I've done and my TV show and, and all of this. And then I bring it all back to me laying on the floor to Broward County jail with, you know, four felonies and, you know, thinking that I was going to prison for four years and, and just, you know, about recovery and about my journey along the way and, and different stories. Like, I mean, there's so many, like, funny stories that I have for them and and uh like what like what are you talking you know just like uh I, I I last time that I was in there I told them a story about addiction and why I'm with 10 years clean I still have a home group and all of this and you know why I came into the jail and and because I told them that I that uh you know that I uh <laughs> I was uh, uh I was in a in my vehicle And there was a, a way to go and you could go right, left and straight. And there was through a hood, you know, and so I was in a, in a Range Rover Yeah. and this was, um, you know, it was the first car that I got after, um, you know, finally ac accumulating some money and nice. it was, and, you know, I had rims on it. And, and so yeah. I told them, you know, that I rolled down the windows Because I said, you know, all of the drug dealers didn't show me respect before because I had a shitty car. <laughs> okay. I had a really nasty yeah. car with yeah. a cracked windshield at, near the end, you know. And so they would see me pull in and be like, oh, he's got like $3 in his pocket. <laughs> yeah, But like exactly. so I said to myself that day. No respect from yeah, the drug dealers. Yeah, I got no respect. <laughs> so, you know, there's that, you know, the, the cracker with $3 in his pocket, you know. <laughs> and so, you know, I said to myself that day. I was at the stoplight and I said, yeah, I'm going to go through the hood and I'm going to like, I'm going to just, you know, call them down to think that they're going to have a big sale All and right. to mess with them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm going to show them. So I, I rolled down the window some and I slowly crept through the hood and I was looking at the guys and I was like, yo, yo, yo. <laughs> and, you know, and then I was like, I'd do a circle and the yeah. guy's like, yeah, circle around, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and they see a big lick, like a big sale. Yeah. And so. I would slow, slowly going through and I told the guys like as I was going through the neighborhood, some things happened to me. Mm. Um, 
my stomach at one point started really churning. Oh wow! You know, like really churning, and and just because everything came back to me, and and so. At one point, I thought to myself, okay, you've got money now. Like, how do you do this at this point? You know, do you still get like a 20 or do you go for like $500 worth and just go (laughs) sit in a hotel? And, you know, and then I, you know, and I told him as I was going through, you know, everything started to change to where it was like a deep obsession to get high. And I had to pull over and and I called my sponsor and I was like, you know, Will, I, I feel like, you know, I feel like getting high. Wow. And, uh, he was like, what happened? And I was like, oh, well, you know, um, I was driving through the hood and I was messing with those guys. And he well, was like, course. driving in the hood. Messing with the You know, <laughs> messing Why? with the guys. He was like, because they didn't respect me before. And now I'm in the range where he's like, are you stupid? Like, stay out of the hood, man. Stay out of the hood. So, But it's a guy thing that sometimes you have. Your ego yeah, needs to ego. be. Ego, yeah, yeah. You know. so, so stories like that about, about why I still am in recovery. Because I make... My, 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 the addict inside of me still makes bad decisions yeah. and like, so. Um, yeah, I'll go to the to the bad neighbor just to mess with them. That's just, a little yeah, just to mess it's with dangerous. them. Dangerous. Stupid. <laughs> like it's, it's like how. But you know what's really going on is that's the addict man saying that's a good idea. Yeah, drive to the hood. <laughs> and maybe you know, yeah, drive to the hood. Drive to the hood. And then as you're driving through the hood, yeah, you'd want. Yeah, you could get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> you know, and 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 you know, my situation in life now is, uh, you know, I'm scared. I'm I'm really scared to get high because I have resources now to where I would kill myself. Because uh, the thing is, you never stop liking that sensation no, you no, had. No, no, no. So it's just about the consequences and not being able to stop. And so, you know, I I say when I speak now is like for me. Because I have resources, you know, I have credit cards, you know, things that I didn't have to before where I could go sit in a hotel for, for, for two weeks and be completely disappear and have Bitch, mound, yeah. mounds of, of, of substances. So, yeah. you know, for me, I believe that it's a death sentence if I, if I, if I relapse. I don't believe that I would survive it. So, so how that's do you, why I take it seriously. Uh, I know you have a very successful business now, yeah. which by the way, uh, it's success is, as they say, opportunity, mm-hmm. you know, when hard work meets opportunity. Right. So you had your business. You had a few calls a month. You yes. Know, and then the Tyra Banks show right. called uh, to right. do a, a feature on you guys. Right. right. Yeah. That was, you know, it's it's funny. It's like, you know, one thing that I've learned is like, you sh- you know, you follow your dreams, but sometimes you don't know what your dreams are. Mm. Um uh, so what gave you the idea first to building a, yeah. an agency for companionship? Well, I had I, I was dating a woman that had an agency, Women for Men, and I learned everything from her. And so she was like, you should start an agency, Men for Women. And I looked online and there was nothing there. So I put up this agency and, and, and re- recruited a few guys and then put it up and just sat back and waited. And there was like nothing that happened. No were you Were you specific about – uh, being a, a straight man yes. for women. Yeah, from agency. the beginning yeah. I was. And so, you know, and then this girl and I broke up and I was like, okay, I'm, this is my opportunity to move to LA and follow my, my dream to keep going into commercial work and, and theater work and, mm-hmm. and acting. And I had just done a couple episodes on a TV show and some commercials and I had modeled and, and that was the dream. And I went to LA and I rented a couch from somebody and, All right. you know, I was there for a while and the dream was like, okay, you know, like in Miami, hey, Hollywood, I was working. I'm here. Hey, you know, it's like, hey, you know, it's just, you know, and then, then, you know, it starts to slowly run out but of money. But eventually it did happen, yeah. you know. Yeah, but, you know, it, it happened in a different direction, you know, to, uh, to have the Tyra Banks call show. And I was like, um, you know, I remember I was like, do you guys pay people to, as guests? <laughs> They said no. And I said, nah, I don't know if I'm interested in doing it. And they're like, what? all right, well, what do you – Yeah, I didn't I, – because I was like, I'm going to be an actor, you know? And, yeah. It, and this so, is just the thing. I, yeah. I and know. so they they offered to pay uh, a $500 fee to come on that show. And I was like, hmm, that's a couple couple – weeks rent of yeah. couch <laughs> let's see how this goes you know and that's how that's what happened and and i called a friend and my friend said save the check just in case you could just say it was like an, an acting gig something yeah, 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 exactly. so you know later on as a, as as an actor mm-hmm. and um just the show was was uh was crazy. So the it, it went. It went to what? Like, like uh, once you did the show, like went to how... top ten Google search sites in the nation, wow. and then from there, it was still slow. It wasn't like overnight success. Yeah. Um, but then uh, the Gigolo show called me, 
and wanted me to 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 work with them on Showtime. And then, you know, from there, it was like Dr. Phil in 2020 and Nightline News. And, you know, what's funny is that throughout all of these years, I've kept my my other sort of s- story a secret as yeah. as an addict you know i, I you know I, I like hid it from everybody and and hid it from you know cuz i was like if they find out they won't have me on the show if oh they find, you thought that of course yeah oh, like wow. you know it was like a sordid dirty weird past you know and that's interesting i thought you know on the contrary like it's inspiring yeah you know? well you know i i I guess in the back of my mind too, it was like I don't, you know, with one year or two years or three years, you know, that's not really. But now it's like I have ten years, you know, ten years away from a substance and you know, ten years clean sober, and so now it's like I feel more comfortable, not only discussing it, but because of the success, like try to make it more of like an inspiration. Because now it's like I'm not as afraid yeah. that I. Would, could mess up like i don't want to be the guy that's like let's go at recovery you know one in two years and then all of a sudden of you know there's a, there's a mug shot and they're like yeah there's that recovery guy with a mug shot well success gives you, know? you some kind of closure so you now you have a, a happy kind yes. of a happy uh, not ending but you know yeah. a happy conclusion to so far your story you know? yeah so, that's good. so far so good now um what a lot of people misinterpret of of uh, a business that Yes. Like what you have is that you have manholes. Right, right, And, right. Uh, you know, that it's uh, sex. Right. Guy standing on the corner. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, having a big penis and that's yeah, it. Yeah, it's all about, yeah. But it's like such, that's one of the biggest questions. Like Something something I yeah. read is that it's, it's really difficult uh, for you to hire uh, a new uh, yeah. guy, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, this what it has taking? nothing to do with like look. I mean, okay, it has something to do with looks. Of course, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but I turn, turn away so many good-looking guys just because – They're idiots. Edu- yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you need you need several other tools in your toolbox. You need an education. You need um, you need to be uh, um, uh, outgoing, mm-hmm. which is you know. There's a lot of people that are not outgoing, and if you're not an outgoing and vibrant person, then you can't be spontaneous and meet somebody new. It's funny because sometimes be there are handsome guys that yeah. don't believe they are... Right. You have handsome. that, but not only that, but like an introverted personality. Okay. Introvert, like, like, hi. Yeah, no no how emotion. You? Try, you try, you, you know. make an effort to not show emotion and that's right. no good. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, a lot of women that, that call the agency are... Uh, something interesting I saw and, and I didn't think about it before. Uh, recovering from cancer or yeah. you know uh, coming out of uh, you know they're looking Bad for a new yeah yeah i mean we we get a lot of that uh, you know a lot of our calls are from people that are going through a divorce mm-hmm. um you know when you're going through a divorce especially like at a high economic level divorce there's a lot of assets to be counted and people hiding assets and this and that and so you know a a, a high-end divorce could last two to three years yeah or longer so yeah mine okay let's <laughs> move on <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, I get it. <laughs> Shoot, do we need to talk? <laughs> Lewis, yeah, let's we, talk. We may no. need to talk. Uh, <laughs> I'm still paying for it. Uh, no, no, but yeah, I understand. Yeah. And then the woman, it's it's a difficult she, time she for can't, her. Yeah. yeah, I mean, she can't start a new relationship, so she's kind of stuck in a grind. And so it's it's an easy way to her for her to go have a little fun in and between. Kind of empowering for her too, right? Yeah, she's she's the one that says what's going to happen. Charge, yeah, and she can spend some of his money on it. Now, no. <laughs> it's, yeah, exactly, which you, it hurts a lot more right. to, the, to the other side. Uh, do have any client requested anything from your guys that they're no? I'm I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to jump off a, a uh, parachute or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they. Yeah, we have had some, you know, skydiving requests, and a guy doesn't want to skydive. <laughs> um, you know, but but a lot of the dates are adventurous. Um, Women getting out of their comfort zone, but but not wanting to do it alone. Okay. White water rafting, like these things that might be a bucket list to them, but they're too afraid to do it kind of on their own. So yeah. they hire a guy to go and you know travel the, travel to different countries. Um, have a client that just called and she is uh, she was married for many years and her husband passed away and they used to be dive partners. Oh, you know wow. to go exotic diving she missed that yeah. yeah so she hired a guy to go on a two-week dive trip with her to uh um molly wow yeah so oh, that's nice did yeah. you have a good time yeah well they're they're going to be going in a few weeks so oh, that's awesome. so you know they met prior to make sure that they were a good match and so you know but for me that's 
that's why I'm here. You know, I'm not here for, I'm here for that reason. I'm here for that woman, that kind of appointment. You know, the, the, the woman doing a two hour fun date, you know, dinner, whatever. Those are, those are great, you know, but what I think about is, you know, that type of woman that, um, was dying of cancer and wanted to go to India, didn't want to go alone. And, Mm. you know, or I think of the woman that, you know, doesn't feel attractive and you know has been told her body type is not attractive her whole life and wow. get an email from her saying thank you so much this is the first time i've ever felt beautiful oh, that's he nice. made me feel beautiful that's really cool yeah. that's why it requires a sensitive type of guy to actually do that kind of yeah. kind of work is right. that you know yeah wow that's uh, uh amazing because uh, one of the things i wanted to ask you is uh and i know you guys don't sell sex is is not mm-hmm. you know it's a companionship service and Whatever happens, you know, uh, with the chemistry, that's another thing. But there's one concept that is really hard for us Latinos to understand, and it's the cuckold uh, uh, concept, oh. in which a husband uh, wants to see his his wife right. uh, having fun with uh, another guy. Do, right. What what's have you ever thought about what yeah. what's that why mentality? Why that? why would somebody? I don't know. I think there's yeah. I mean, I don't I don't really understand that myself. <laughs> Um, you know, my wife is, you know, uh, Lat- Latina. She, she and, won't go uh, for that shit. No, like, I mean, I have a tough time walking through the mall with her because, like, if there's a pretty girl, okay, I learned at the beginning, like, don't ever turn your head to oh, look at a pretty no. girl. Never. No. Never. It's slapped right there. Never. Now, but I got the tricky, slapped in the face. Oh, yeah. No. Well, the, the tricky part then is to pretend, is to, like, because then if there's a pretty girl and you look like this, she'll go, what? It, you like her? Wow. You know, yeah. so you have to be careful. You can't look away and you can't look at. So you have to sort of like go into neutral ground. And just if there's a pretty girl, just sort of stay neutral and pretend like she doesn't even exist. Because if you pretend yeah. like, oh, I'm not looking at her, honey, then I you pretend get to be lost. Trouble. Yeah. I, I, I pretend to sometimes I say, honey, wait a minute. Uh, was that? And then I look back. To yeah. See was that the street? No, never mind. It's you have just- to like, you have to come with some big diversion plan because you or know, just don't do it. You know, it's, yeah, it's it's a tricky situation. I told her like, let's let's just buy me blinders. So, you know, like the horses wear for when we go to public places. <laughs> but that's uh, it, it's fascinating to me how many uh, tastes and and different fantasies yeah. uh, people have. Right? Yeah. Has yeah. there been anything that you guys have been like? Okay, this is this is different. We've never encountered. Well, I mean, like I this. get some weird emails. Like, I don't know what these people are thinking. I mean, I've gotten some really weird, strange. In which you had to say, just, "Oh, oh no, yeah, we, we just can't. yeah." I mean, I don't even respond to most of them. But like, but, what? You know. what? What would somebody request that you <sighs> that you may say? Nah, that's all right. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, just really disgusting kind of oh. things. You know, like I don't even know. Do you want? Do you want to hear gross things? Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, I love gross. Well, okay. Things. So, all right. So, did you see the McAfee documentary, Gringo? No. You have to watch this. Thing. Okay. Uh, uh, they were talking about scat sex. Okay. Which is you know shitting on people's mouths. Oh yeah. And yeah. this guy was into this. Yeah. John McAfee. It's crazy. Oh, that McAfee guy. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, he's, that, yeah, he's show, nuts. You got to watch Showtime. Okay. No, I, yeah, I think they have Gringo. It's called Gringo. Check okay. it out. It's really interesting. So it's not all about shit and sex. I'm just saying yeah, that yeah. It. No, no. That's okay. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. I was but like, yeah. So, well, I don't know if I'll watch that, but no, no, I'll watch it. <laughs> uh, I got an email, and like it was from a man, and and uh, he wrote. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, hi, um, you know, I'm looking to hire a male escort and this is for my wife. And just to let you know in advance that I'm into cream pie. And, uh, oh, and I was like, I said, hello, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I'm really just don't lost. I don't desserts. know. I don't know what cream pie is. And, uh, he wrote back a letter and he was very explicit and he said, well, um, y- you know, uh, it's where a guy can't wear a condom and then, you know, he would, you know, relieve himself into the – and then he would – Clean it up? Yes. Oh, shit. That's the, oh. probably the grossest thing that I've got an email from. And, you know, this, and then at that point I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and like, delete, delete, delete. Oh, my God. You know, get this away from me. Oh, my God. This is crazy. You got to be careful, right? Because in reality – you cannot. Uh, you no, have a website. Don't. You yeah. sell through the website. Correct. We don't. It's not that you have a, a Mustang Ranch or no, something. No, no, no. We don't do anything like yeah. that. Yeah, but uh, but you know, it was, uh, 
I was just like, I, I just didn't, you know, it's like, it was during the beginning of my agency. I was like, I just, you know, I was trying to make a sale possibly. I was like, oh, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't know what this is. Okay. But let's find out, you know, and but uh, it was gross. maybe someone else would have just said, I'll take the money, whatever, you know, right. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. You know, I guess that's, that could be, you know, the word escort in the United States, escort agencies are 100% legal. Yeah. And, uh, you so know, you're just selling companionship. companionship, but you know, maybe what could happen for an escort agency is, um, they could get two or three calls and like, Hey, I just want this, or I want full service, or I want that, or I want this. And like, at one point they're just like, okay, okay, fine. You know, and you know, and that's like where you could cross a line. Um, but, have you ever you know, guy, have, have your business ever been in, in any type of, uh, not trouble, but maybe, uh, no. the authorities were inquiring? Maybe. About I mean, I've gotten some weird emails and calls and texts, but you know, we're very, 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 very cut and dry. Like, okay. uh, you know, I'm not here to make, you know, a few hundred dollars, a few thousand dollars for a felony. Like the answer is no. Do you have the elite? Uh, mail agency, you would say, right? Cause I, yeah. you guys are, uh, yeah, we're the best of the best. Yeah. I mean, worldwide. How many guys work for you? A hundred now. A hundred. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's all straight. Yeah. Or, yeah. 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 That's interesting because, you know, a lot of people would say, how do you make money with that? And you do. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, what's the, uh, the, the rates? Yes. Um, the starting rate is like 650 for two hours or mm -hmm. 1200 for a lot of women do four hours, 1200 overnights. Mm -hmm. Um, And then once they, if they like somebody, then they can book a trip for longer. Cool. So, are most women that call you uh, independent? Uh, yeah, uh, we don't. Women we don't or? do. We don't do cheaters. Like you know, okay. you know, uh, you know. In recovery, I learned some principles and some uh, of spirituality, and I try to carry that over to my business. So when a woman will call, she'll like. Um, okay, so I can't give you my name because I'm married and I don't want anyone to find out. I'm like, listen. You're putting your guy at risk too. That too. Yeah. It's like, listen, you know, I'm not here to like for that. We're not Ashley Madison. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. I'm not Ashley Madison. You know, we're here for women that are single. We're here, you know, we're not here to target, you know, cheaters or anything like that. So, you know, I would say you should take that money and invest it into a relationship therapist. You guys are going into a seventh season of yeah. Gigolos, right? Well, congratulations. Yes. Man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We haven't signed anything as of yet. So we're still sort of in the, in the hover mode, waiting mode. So how long does it take to produce a, a season? Usually, um, the actual filming is about five weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's a lot of prep before that, two or three, it could be a month, you know, prior. Um, so I do a lot of that prep prior to it because I'm the creative consultant. There's a couple of guys that left, um, in the first. Yes. A couple of seasons, right? Yeah. Uh, well, what happened? Why, why did they leave? Um, let me think. So. Because one of them said that he fell in love, whatever, but I don't know. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, well, still yeah, TV we shows. just, you know, they kind of just got writ written off. Okay. All right. Well, it wasn't. Yeah. Well, yeah. Is it personality, right? I mean, do do you go by uh, feedback, like when when viewers see the show and then they say, "Hey, I like this guy" or whatever? And Not then, really. Um, so there's yeah. certain freedom in terms of uh, the production of the show, yes. right? Because yeah, a lot yeah. of these shows have a, a you know a, a group that monitors everything, and then they say, "No, this guy has to leave." And right, we have an actor that may be uh, able to portray that. Right. Know. Well, yeah. I mean, we. The only thing that we have to do is we have to make it dirty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Showtime. Yeah, makes, of course. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny. It's, you know, as a creative consultant. So you think the show looks dirtier than what, what oh, yeah. actually? Well, it's showtime. It's 11 p.m. It's their sex show. It's It's got to be sexy and dirty. Now, the most important question here. Uh, the wife, how does she deal with this? Is she okay? Because, you, I mean, you don't. you don't. Well, you're not part of the roster. I mean, you don't, you don't. Oh, my wife. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. My wife loves what I do. I mean, okay. um, she loves what you do. Yeah, she does. Please she explain that. She, well, <laughs> just, just because, you know, at the end of the day, she hears the women or, you know, hears them thanking me. Because she understands them, the concept uh, yeah, that she's you have. Making, make, we're making women happy. You know, so how can as she long as angry? you're not because oh, but I'm not allowed to go. Exactly. <laughs> Just as long as I have other guys making women happy, then she's completely 100% go. Now, are um, any of you guys married? Uh, no. No. Okay. Yeah. I Some mean, of them have tried have, to have relationships. Yeah. But. You know, it's this is like a sort of like a job where you where you're single. 
you know. Now, do you have any guys that look like us? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Okay. I have some Latin guys. No, I'm saying, you know, like kind of disfigured like me. <laughs> no, I'm saying like, do, do anybody request a stocky, uh, you know? Well, you know what's crazy is that. Chubby Latino guy? You know, we we have a lot of women. Not for that, cleaning, I'm saying. Yeah, you know, not for <laughs> Companionship. <laughs> well, we have a lot of women that will call that are going to a, like a corporate event. And they're like, listen, I can't have a guy that looks too much like a model. Like okay. I need the sort of a regular kind of guy. So I mean, we have a lot of guys that are. Sort of just kind of More regular, that not will muscular, fit in. you know, good yeah. looking, but not you good, know, you know d but not really muscular. Just sort of that will fit into a crowd. You should crowd. hire like one ninety-year-old guy as a joke, like just the, you a know, guy. you know, just for some like he TMZ opens press. The other <laughs> 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 well, listen, uh, Garen, it's. Uh, uh, I mean, I really admire not only when somebody has an idea that develops into a successful business, but coming from somebody that at one point that thought. That Life had nothing for nothing, him, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. To uh, congratulations, it's Thank really you. cool to to talk to you, and uh, and uh, you must feel proud of where, yes. where you are, right? Yeah, beautiful yeah. family, successful beautiful business, flight. and I and I was homeless before, so yeah. You know, when you go from from, from homeless to that, you know, it's what I'm sorry. And, and let me just ask you yeah. real quick: you were homeless, you had no no family or oh, anybody no, well, to no I wasn't allowed in anybody's home at that point really? I would just steal from them so what well, yeah. it was because of that like yeah. kind of the wow oh yeah yeah there's no more crazy. boundaries left once once you get to a certain point as an addict there's nothing left a true success story Garen yeah. thank you very thank much you. thank you Louis. thank you it's really thank cool you.